dear website visit, dear friends, dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, dear family. Since we often received incomprehension, repulsion and head shaking for the informations on our website, we would like to take a short stand on that. All informations on our site originate from our God and Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and are not our own words. Whether you can recognize that or not, that is a different story. But it is not our intention to step on anybody's toes, because first we have taken it all into our own hearts, and we have discerned it, and we only share the truth how we have received it from various sources with the same results. Now, one could say, but we have believed our whole life that, or it cannot all have been wrong what we, etc. No, of course not, not all, but it was not the complete truth. But when our Savior says, my sheep know my voice, and follow me wherever I go. And now, since the rapture is pending, he is calling to repentance, louder and louder. Shall we then ignore his voice, only because that which we knew up to now as truth does not correspond to that? Okay, now, what is true love? Is it love when I tell someone that I love them, but tell them only what their ears like to hear? Or is it love to tell them the truth, even if it hurts in that moment, but keeps them from hurting in their future? Just think about that for a short moment. All of you who have children, the answer is clear. We love our children and therefore tell them also things which they do not want to hear but would keep them from future troubles. Well, sometimes they listen and sometimes they don't. So in that case, they have to learn through experience and maybe even through harm and suffering. There is a saying, if one does not want to hear, he has to feel it. Could it be that you have not been told and taught the whole truth? About our God and Savior Jesus Christ? Could it be that you are slumbering in a false peace and security regarding your state before Him? Romans 8.13 For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Have you been fully converted in your heart? 2 Corinthians 11.3 But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. All that truly love me keep all my commandments. 1 John 2.3-6 and by this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way, in which he walked. Is he always in your thoughts and your number one priority in all you do? Also in bringing souls into his kingdom? Matthew 6.33 But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Or have you just been baptized outwardly, but continue living in the world as all others do? Just remember, friendship with the world is enmity with God. 
1 John 2.15 Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Romans 12.2 Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Do you know that you cannot serve God and wealth? You can only serve one master and by default you serve Satan. Matthew 6.24 No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Is there still willful sin in your life, like pride, arrogance, selfishness, lying, fornication, adultery, envy, jealousy, gossip, slander, judging others, bearing false witness, not keeping the Sabbath, the seventh day, which he blessed and told us to keep holy, and do only that which is helping the fatherless, the widows, the orphans and those in need. Hebrews 10, 26-31 for if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but the fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved for the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, and again the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. James 1, 26-27 If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridles not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless, and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. If you answered the above question regarding willful sins with yes, you truly need to humble yourself before him and repent from the depth of your heart and also forgive all the trespasses done to you by others with a sincere heart and a tearful prayer. And then turn away from these sins once and for all. Ask him for his help and he will help you if you truly mean it. 1 John 1 9 If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 3.15 Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. 1 John 4.20 If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. Accept him in a sincere prayer as your one and only Savior and ask him to come and live within you and guide you. Lay your life down at his feet every day anew and ask him to show you his will and his destiny for your life. 
If this would not be so very, very important, why would our beloved Savior take the time to warn us over and over again through His messengers and prophets? If we were ready for the rapture, why would He be so concerned about us being left behind? Think about that while reading or listening to the truth which Jesus revealed to different souls living in different periods of time. Jesus loves us also very much, which is why he tells us to wake up from our slumber and turn away from the world and all its allurements and from religion and all its dead ceremonies. He would never lie to us. He wants us all in the safe ark of his heart before the door shuts and all hell breaks loose on earth. Lies and a false peace and a false security are the work of Satan. All lies come from him. He is the father of lies. So don't trust in any man because man is so easily deceived by the evil one. Only trust in Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who died for you and me on the cross. And heed what the Holy Spirit tells you, that still small voice inside of you. Don't think with your intellect, but with your heart. Jesus loves you so very much that he would go through his sufferings once again just for you. And we love you also which is why we make the effort to put all his messages, letters and renewed revelations together on our website. It is not because we have nothing else to do, but because you and your destiny matter to us. Blessings and love to all of you. Jackie, Theo and Pascal